You know, Sarah, sometimes I forget that you and your sister are idols. I mean, you don't mention it as much as Lexington does, but you gotta show your capabilities. And I think I have the right idea. Okay, this isn't working. You know, I, I, I thought you guys could easily do it. I mean, San Diego's done it. Sandy has her own stage, she's got her own song. She's even made herself known as an idol, yet you two don't have any of that. I guess you could try to beat her at the catchphrase game. Yeah, that one might be a good start. Moving on to another duo, we have the Eagle Carriers, Lexington and Saratoga. Generally, I don't cover ships with some differences together, but I figured since they're relatively the same, let's go ahead and cover them together. Both of them are pretty much the same, save for one aspect, which we'll get into later on in the video. Now, Saratoga and Lexington are both elite carriers that can be obtained via map drop or crafting. The real question is, are they worth the time and effort? Or is trying to be idols all they're really known for? Well, let's take a look. Stats-wise, both of them are pretty much the same. They both are surprisingly tanky with the 6k health pool. I mean, this puts them above Enterprise in terms of health. Their armor is the normal medium armor type, which all carriers seem to have. It gives them a slight vulnerability to AP shells when attacked. When compared to other carriers at their rarity, they seem to have the average evasion of the group. But like always, it's low enough that they're still likely to be hit. Their anti-air stat is a tad bit on the low side. So, if they're going to get attacked by planes, they're going to take a bit more damage than their fellow elite colleagues. On the offense side of things, their aviation stat is on the higher end, but suffers from a reload that is below 100. This means they will take longer to launch their planes as they will suffer a little bit from their reload penalty. They both have a nice loadout of one set of fighters and two sets of dive bombers. And when fully limit broken, they will attack with two fighters and six dive bombers in total. The large number of dive bombers is a great thing, so expect some good damage thanks to this loadout. Their overall efficiencies are almost on par with the rest of the elite carriers as well. They are a little bit better at dive bombers than most of them, however they are worse with, with fighters than the rest. Taking this into account and only having two fighters means that air superiority probably isn't really their focus. The only stat difference right now that they have is their luck, with Saratoga leading. But we'll get into why they separate later on. Now that we have access to level 120, we can see that they get some nice boosts to their overall stat line. I definitely don't mind the boost to their health and evasion, which will just help them last longer in missions. As well as having a nice boost to their aviation and reload, which helps them hit harder and faster. Now these two don't really stand out with their stat line, and as I've said before, that's kind of the case with all carriers. What really makes or breaks a carrier comes down to their skills, and <laughs> boy do they have some seriously interesting skills. Both of their first skills is Artillery Cover, or as I've heard from some of you, This skill allows both of them to provide supporting fire with their guns. Yes, despite being carriers, they both have their own time barrage. Now this barrage initially fires every 20 seconds, but will be only every 10 once fully leveled. The damage from the three bursts barrage is also dependent on the skill's level. Now, <laughs> honestly I was laughing at how effective this skill was. I was thinking that as carriers the gun damage would be pretty bad, but that is pretty decent damage. The fact that it can be spammed pretty often and is of the HE ammo type is also a nice plus. What was hilarious was that there were a few times that they actually defended themselves from bomb boats. You know, something I didn't expect a carrier to be able to do. Now this skill gets even more hilarious when you sortie Lexington and Saratoga together, because the constant barrage spam is just great. <laughs> now, I guess you could look at this skill as a free damage skill that actually puts in some pretty decent work by damaging or just cleaning up mobs. Now unfortunately I didn't have the skills maxed up by the time of this recording, but they were leveled up enough to have a decent amount of impact in gameplay. Now onto their second skill is Fleet Carrier, which increases the Vanguard's damage by up to 15% for 8 seconds upon launching an airstrike. This skill isn't a unique skill, as others do have this one as well, but it does complement that they do have kind of the whole free damage kind of concept behind them. The one drawback to this skill is that they do not stack with each other. If you decide to pair the two of them together, it would probably be better if you let one of them attack, wait a small period of time, and then let the other one attack. That way you can constantly use the buff. 
I'm not saying you can't attack with both, but if you do that, one of them will lose the fleet carrier buff. Now their skills really do make them stand out as the free extra damage support carriers. They can do some considerable damage with their planes, but they also have other avenues for dishing out damage that's worth considering. It's kind of nice that you have a carrier that's not limited to just airstrikes for damage. Now, at this point in time is where the two of them start taking separate paths. Now Saratoga has a retrofit available to her while Lexington does not. This is probably due to the fact that, well, Saratoga has lasted longer than Lexington, and also has received a modification in that time frame. Her retrofit does add a bit to her stat line, making her noticeably better than her sister in several areas. Now she also gains a skill called Witch's Prank, which grants up to a 70% chance when launching an airstrike to release a special strike that inflicts flood and burn damage over time to ship's hit. Because you know, <laughs> nothing is better than a free damage support carrier than more free damage. <laughs> oh man, I love it. All things considered, her retrofit is worth the materials required, so I guess this gives you more of a reason to grind hard mode 3-4, right? Now on to the last question, would they be best in mob or boss fleets? I would say that if you use one of them, specifically Saratoga, then they can be used in boss fleets. Running them together will be better with mob fleets. The reason I don't suggest both in boss is due to their skill confliction. In order to maximize the skill, you would have to delay one of their airstrikes to get the best use of fleet carrier. In doing so, your engagement will take longer, which puts your fleet at risk if the boss is strong enough to wipe out your front line. In mob fleets, you can get away with that, as enemies aren't generally that strong to be a huge threat to your front line, of course. You can sacrifice that buff, but what good is that? And of course, their artillery cover skill works great against the rank and file mobs as well. Saratoga's bonus skill, Witch's Prank, works on both fleets since it's pretty much free damage against whoever she hits. Now, they don't have any crazy synergies with anyone, but their fleet carrier skill would do decently with those of you who'd like to use high damage frontliners. Of course, you could always just run the two of them together and enjoy the spam that they both do, and that's entirely up to you. Of course, you could also rely on carriers that also boost overall aviation stats, so I guess there's that as well. It really depends on how you want to play that out. Overall, Saratoga and Lexton are interesting characters that don't need to rely solely on airstrikes to get the job done. They have their own gun barrage capability that allows them to stay engaged in the fight even on cooldown. So think of them like whole shoal with a gun, but obviously better. Both of them are really good carriers, and Saratoga's retrofit makes her an even better pick thanks to the stat boosts and the additional skill that she gets. These two are definitely worth leveling, if not at least just Saratoga. Just remember that they will still have to compete with another ship for the position of best idol. And honestly, I think they got their work cut out for them. But until then, I'll be waiting at 9-3. Oh. Oh, okay then. And that will be all for Saratoga and Lexton. Hope you enjoyed this video and that it will help you in your future sorties. As usual, the list is shown below. If there is a ship girl that I have not covered that is not on this list, then feel free to let me know, and I'll get them in next time. Up next is the lonely queen of the north, Tear Pits. So look forward to her video in the near future whether you are a regular viewer or a patron supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video or live stream that I do. See you all again real soon.